Okay, we went to the doctor today for the follow-up. Now that I'm off immunotherapy to see what's going to happen. And um, we went thinking we didn't really have any options left. Everything we've been told before. Um, what was supposed to happen after a spread was supposed to happen really fast, really aggressively, and um, not leave a lot of options other than just like um, enough chemo to try to slow it down. So um, we didn't really think we were going to have anything good come out of the meeting today. But this oncologist, we really love him. He's the first oncologist that I had. Um, and then I switched to the immunotherapy oncologist and, um, so he came in and the first thing that he said was looking at the CT scans, um, at the new, at the new tumors, he already talked to the, um, gynecological oncologist that I just saw about doing a surgery on me to remove them. Um, he'd always said before that surgery like wasn't a possibility um, that once it spread there's not, nothing you can do to stop it or slow it down that he's like ever experienced so um, he he was even hopeful going forward um, saying that completely like being able to take the tumors out that it'll give us a better chance to do what they weren't able to do before, but find a targeted immunotherapy for it. Um, so he's making like long distance future plans, which is like really encouraging. And um, he'd already s started setting it up for me to go back and see that doctor. He sent me right away um, from his office over to the gynecological oncologist and um, I talked to him for a little while and where before he thought it was best to just do nothing um, to interfere with the immunotherapy. Now that I'm off of immunotherapy, he did agree that this was the best course of action to take. Um, he said that I have previous scar tissue from an exploratory surgery. My incision is about... 15 inches long. It's almost my entire torso. He said if scar tissue interferes with that, he won't be able to remove the tumors. So we definitely are in need of prayer for that. He said he won't know until he gets inside and sees what, if any kind of damage there is. So if you just pre please pray for us that nothing would hinder being able to remove the tumors. His plan is to remove whatever is necessary, the minimum of that being my ovaries, fallopian tubes, and the tumors. Um, he said if he has to, but he does not intend to, he would remove my uterus. He wants it to be the least... Um, invasive and requiring the smallest amount of recovery so that I can start chemo really fast. Um, he thinks that I could start chemo within a week or two after surgery. The oncologist had said about a month after surgery. Um, the gynecological oncologist said the reason for that is that certain chemotherapies can interfere with healing. So, um, this is all good. It moved really fast. They set me an appointment for surgery next Wednesday. So, um, we will hopefully next Wednesday be removing these tumors. The oncologist said that I also have other little free floating or maybe not free floating. I have other little pieces of cancer, um, that are on their own in the fat cap of the abdomen the surgeon said he wants to remove a good portion of that fat cap. So this may be, it's the possibility of being, um, a removing all of the new cancers and then doing chemo. So it has the possibility of 
just really, really great results um, in terms of quality of life and more life. They said the tumor right now, the bigger one, is about the size of a baseball. And that the other one is about the size of a large marble. So I'll have a lot less pain. I have a lot of relief just from removing those. And um, the oncologist said also my artery to my liver is being compressed, which the other oncologist had said also. He said it's reducing the blood flow to my liver, which is affecting the blood flow to all of my digestive organs. So I'm not receiving enough blood flow right now. That may explain why I'm having some like additional digestive complications and stuff. And um, they want to go in and put a stent in. He's checking right now to see if I'm going to be a good candidate for that. Um, if it will be possible. So prayers that that would be possible. Um, and those are, those are, I think pretty much it, what we covered today. We're just really excited. We really feel like it's completely a miracle. It's not at all what was supposed to happen. It's not, it's something we've been told over and over again isn't even in the realm of possibilities not an option for me um, and just the fact that people in our family have been like praying regardless um, my mom being one our son Damien that I would be able to have surgery they keep bringing it up over and over again our son Christian said that that's what he had been hoping would happen even though we keep saying that we've been told no um, and so we just really feel like it's just God's hand on me moving. Today was way more than we expected. And he was saying that your original tumor hasn't changed at all since the yeah. end of radiation. So. Right. Him, so this oncologist seeing it since he monitored the, monitored the tumor before, he said he didn't really see any change in the pancreas tumor um, to speak of. It may be that the immunotherapy inflamed it a little bit because it is an inflammatory, it causes an inflammatory response, an inf inflammatory immune response in your body. So it's possible that that just was a result of being on immunotherapy. Um, he said he didn't see any change, so he felt pretty good about the initial tumor. Um, you know, it's still possible the chemo stays in you for six months at least. So it's still possible that the radiation and the chemo continue to work to kill that tumor. Um, it obviously hasn't stopped other cancers from forming. We still don't even know if those cancers in my abdomen are pancreas cancer. Um, he really felt like it was associated with my ovaries. Um, and, and he worded it that way. Um, I, I don't remember his exact words, but he was saying, you know, the tumors near and with my ovaries like so they want my ovaries out um, they're thinking this is like ovarian so it's what it seems like um, they haven't like put a name on it yet though so we're very excited um, I completely have peace uh, I, I know that this wouldn't even be possible without God there's absolutely no way um it defies everything that any of us thought was going to happen, including the doctors. And um, he was, and his nurses were like amazed to see me today. They were like, you're well, back. Yeah, You've been in immunotherapy a long time. Like We haven't seen him in, since the first week of January. 
So they were like, I mean, they were really excited that I'm still like around. So, I mean, if that just goes to show like how deadly it is and how it goes for most people. So the fact that I'm even still here is miraculous. It's definitely the power of prayer um, and the power of God and prayer moving God's hands. So we thank everybody for all of your prayers for us. Um, today is probably the first update we've ever had that it was a joy to like be able to tell family and friends something that was really good news. So we're looking forward to next week. Um, very hopeful about it. I have total peace and joy in my heart for it. Um, I'll be excited to get these tumors out. They don't feel good. Um, haven't talked about that a lot because I don't want to cause like extra worry to my family and stuff. So I'm just kind of like, yeah, I'm hurting a little bit. Like doesn't, you know, doesn't feel very good, but actually like, yeah, there's a baseball size tumor abdomen so yeah <laughs> whatever that feels like so yeah it's been a great day for us and a huge blessing we thank everybody so much for praying for us and for continued prayer for us um, please continue to pray um, for our friends John Burroughs and Ellie as they're like dealing with their cancer and their journey and um, if I've never said before in, in all of this I'm really thankful it's it's I would never have chose this path to grow closer to God but that's what it's done and um, it's hard sitting in the office expecting bad news, but even in that, you have peace knowing that God's with you, and to see him do, like, just complete miracles beyond what you even imagined was possible, um, he just shows himself over and over to be great, greater than we can imagine, so I'm thankful that this is the way that I to him. It's really hard, but it's really good. So whatever you're facing, just trust that he genuinely does intend to bring good from it. And that regardless of what it is, that our end will be better than our beginning. Just like Job. This is temporary should be trying with all we have to hold on to our life. We have to trust our life to Him. Scripture tells us if we try to hold on to it, we will lose it. So, just hold it loosely and thankfully. Enjoy it and give Him the glory and the praise for giving it to us because it's a huge blessing. And when it is time, for him to call us home. We have to be able to go weaned from this world and with thankful and grateful hearts for what we have and for what's coming. Because what's coming is so much better. And even though we know that, it's still hard, but it's so much better. So I pray that God gives you all peace today and joy in knowing him and his provision and his hand on you 